let me connect to one of the instance. It is, yeah, let me connect. I'm just going to connect to the one of the instance that is running in the backend. Yeah. So let me continue install, create an install directory. And I will just continue there. So as you see, guys, there is nothing in here. And I'm just going to the Ant Media box. Go to Quick Start. Yeah, so we will just have we will have just an up we will have an update for this page to make it very seamless. And I just download the installation script. So right now, as you see, there is nothing in this directory. And when I type sudo install and media server, it is op install jq. Uh, this has just fixed. And when I click, when I just type the sudo install and media server as h, so if we don't give any parameter, it automatically downloads the latest and media server community edition and install it automatically. So as you see, right now it is installed and it is running. Uh, as you see, this is the community edition. On the other hand, uh, as you see previously, we just need to uh, upload to the zip, uh, package zip file to the Ant Media server and then um, make installation. The same way works. It is backward compatible. But, uh, and on the other hand, so we can just install it without downloading any zip file. And second installation is for the Enterprise Edition. Uh, in order to install the Enterprise Edition, I will just give my alt parameter and I will give the um, license key. So I think it is here. I just create a license key for this test. And yeah, as you see, uh, it says that the license key is valid and downloading the latest version of Antimedia Server Enterprise Edition. So as you see, it is just downloading and it will install it very quick. So I think the life will be easier for uh, the developers. So uh, another thing I just would like to show you. Uh, so this server is this one, uh, uh, this IP address. I'm just going to enable the SSL uh, with the new installation, with the new structure. Uh, the NA, you, if you don't have any domain name, you can just type the sudo enable SSL SH and it will get the an automatic domain address as a subdomain of Ant Media Cloud and it will, will just install it with the let's encrypt. Uh, let's see. So it is just waiting for DNS validation here. Yeah, so the DNS success installing SSL certificate, and it seems that my fully qualified domain name is something like this one. Yeah, so uh, if I go to this address, yeah, as you see, uh, I can access to the server through HTTPS. It is a very seamless solution. If you don't have any other domain address, uh, no worries, the Ant Media provides you some kind of subdomain uh, to make you to test you, your pr product or use it on your end. So I click the Start Publish button and right now it's publishing. Let me show you the version here at ETC release. As you see, this is the Ubuntu 22.04. Uh, as uh, we just resolved the native libraries issues that block us to migrate to, to support the 20.04. Right now it is supported and all these operations are done in 20.04 20, of Ubuntu uh, version. So right now I'm just going to show you a demonstration uh, about high availability. So uh, there is a two server running in the backend side, and there is a one load balancer in front of them. So in this ser uh, in this way, I will just kill some of the server and see that the streaming is going well or not. 
Uh, and I expect to see that this switchover scenario, or in other words, failover scenario works well if one of the instances are just killed uh, for some reason. So uh, this improved high availability is coming with the uh, new release 261, and it is likely available later today. But for today, I will just install through snapshot and and continue there. So, yeah, I think the MongoDB is running here. And right now, I'm just attaching these. Uh, let, let me. Uh, I will make installation and let me attach this server to the cluster. Uh, let me continue to user local and media IO. Uh, and I'm just going to run these commands. Change server mode to Mongo cluster and I'm using MongoDB. So it is running in the backend side and I will just change it. So, uh, as I mentioned, there are two servers running. Uh, one of them is the OS demo, the other one is OS demo 2, and I use the Nginx uh, for the load balancer. And I assign domain name to the Nginx, event.antmenu.cloud. Uh, and let me continue through events uh, antmenu.cloud through the panel to see that the both instances are running in the backend side. I just would like to say something for you. I use 444 to connect through HTTPS uh, because we change uh, the algorithm to distribute the load in the backend side. To access to the uh, dashboard in Nginx, we just create a 444 uh, for HTTP access and 445 for HTTP access. So there is just a, a number for the servers, for the backend sites. So as you see, there are two instances running here. Uh, and one instance is this one, as I just installed. And, uh, and the other one, let me connect to the other one as well. I'm just connecting, and I will just show you uh, scenario. So I'm going to publish Antmedia uh, WebRTC stream through load balancer. Uh, and another thing I just would like to demonstrate is that in the previous version, we specified the load through, we specified the target uh, we specify the origin or age through uh, port numbers. But for the latest version, uh, you don't need to worry about that. The, the built-in structure in the SDK just forwards to play request to the age nodes and forwards to publish request to the origin nodes automatically. You don't need to deal with the port numbers anymore. So then I'm just publishing the stream. And it seems that it is yeah it is in the server so then i'm just playing the stream as you see this is here and i think it is yeah as you see it is here uh, so i'm just going to kill the server that makes me watch this stream, this play. So my expectation is the publishing will not change and uh, the, the play site will fail over to the, the other node automatically uh, with a very seamless way. So uh, I just sudo service and media stop. So it is still playing. As you see, this is my playback. And it is stop. And 
it is start again. So right now, this server handles the both publish and play scenarios. Uh, and in the second sample, I'm just going to start this one again. And this time, I'm just going to kill this one so that the publish and play will con will switch over to the new instance that is running in the backhand side. So we will see that there is just a small uh, change here. So service and media stop. Yeah. So it seems that it is stopped, uh, as you see, and it will start. Yeah, as you, right now it is started, and yeah, it is started here as well. Even if there's just a couple of seconds, maybe less interruption or issue, then it will start to publish and play automatically without any uh, without any problems. You don't need to uh, handle anything. This stuff is handled in the backend side or in the SDK side. So you don't need to deal with these things on the application level. So it makes the life very easy for the developers. Uh, this is the point. 